Right off the bat, I want to apologise for how I look and for how I sound because I have been battling with the most hideous cold. So I apologise for sounding more annoying than usual. Anyway, hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. And if you're not new here, hello again. Now, I'm sure all of you guys have heard of the current situation with Smart Schoolboy 9. It's absolutely everywhere all over the internet with almost every creator you can think of putting their two pence in on the situation. It seems at the moment we can't escape it as it's also made it to TikTok. But the thing is, this whole situation has revealed a problem and the problem is essentially that when a story like this goes viral, the internet always takes it too far. But then again, when does the internet not go too far? Because we used to have that group of girls that would like fantasise about serial killers, which is still pretty prominent today with the likes of Wade Wilson. And I'm not talking about Deadpool. But what do I mean by this? It's almost like the internet has ruined it in a way but not really because it hasn't ruined it it's I don't know how to explain it because what do I mean by this because please don't get me wrong in this video I am in no way defending smart schoolboy at all whatsoever don't get it twisted I'm more leaning towards the people that have made this story into a laughing stock of the internet and are taking it as least seriously as humanly possible people have taken this story and turned it into something that it just isn't whether it be from lack of evidence or just straight up lies from people claiming that smart schoolboy 9 is some kind of deranged murderer to that he was involved in the disappearance of Anne Andrew Gosden. Yeah, I'm not kidding. To the people that just think the situation is genuinely that funny enough to make it into a meme of some sort. Which, I mean, if you look at this situation, I mean, it's it's funny in a sense that it's insane. It's crazy that it's going on. But the fact people have brought this onto a child's game and continued to make edits of it is absolutely insane. So I thought into today's video we could delve into why the internet is beginning to jeopardise the smart schoolboy 9 case. Without further ado, I'll quit yapping and let's just get straight into the video. So if you have been living under a rock for the past like month or so, or you just don't have access to the internet or you literally have anything better to do and you have absolutely no idea what the quote-unquote smart schoolboy 9 situation is let me give you a really 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 brief rundown because there is so much information that has come out about this and quite frankly I want to keep this video relatively not two hours long. So it all started when a Reddit user made a post on the r slash internet mystery board and showed a very unsettling, somewhat horrifying discovery. This user had came across multiple different Instagram accounts that were supposedly made by children and were monitored by these children's mothers, fathers, parents, so on. Guardians, if you if you will. There was multiple different accounts of interest. One of them was called Truth Sticks 11, another one Stephanie Schooley, and the one that is the most well known, Smart Schoolboy 9. So the Truth Sticks account was the one that was claimed to be run by the person's mother and basically it just documented like a child's daily school life. You know what they did in school, what they were up to, that kind of thing. But again, the posts were not adding up to that as it was found that this was absolutely nowhere near the truth of what was going on and ironically which you're going to find out why in a moment why this is ironic ironically this mother on this page would call out pdf files that would interact with her son on this account and she would like post this guy is trying to speak to a 13 year old boy oh my god look how weird it is but then getting onto the posts all these posts were like of heavily edited weird looking children for example they looked like they were from the uncanny valley they'd been their eyes had been enlarged their lips their mouths had been made redder and bigger they had an edited british school uniform on like it looked like something out of like a scrapbook from a comic like or some kind of kids tv show from back in the day that's the only way i can explain it but with heavy hints of like undertones of fetishes underneath it so for example there was like an ankle boot fetish in quite a lot of the photos and these accounts claimed that the children were about 13 and 14 years old the stephanie schooly one was pretty much just the same as truth sticks it, you know it was some 
parent running the account or the child running the account themselves posting a lot of heavily edited photos about them, what they were doing where they lived i'm going to flash some up now and show you or i've probably flashed some up before i don't know i've not edited this video right now i'm filming it these two accounts on their own i suppose could be shrugged off as some kind of disturbing and disgusting art project but then with the introduction of another account smart schoolboy 9 this is where the case takes a turn for the absolutely horrifying world Worst. This is because the Smart Schoolboy 9 page wasn't photos of heavily edited children. No, no, no. This this page was run by a human and not just a human. This, this page was run by a fully grown man. Not only was it run by a fully grown man, but a fully grown man that pretended to dress up like a child in a school uniform. He posted videos of himself dressed up in an actual school uniform. The school of the uniform are aware of it they know that this has been going on he would post about how excited he was that he was going to school that day and what he'd been doing and that he was allowed to wear ankle boots to school because his uniform policy says so very clearly this whole thing is a gross fetish about school children i'm here at school like bro would paint his face white and accentuate the features on himself making himself look like a child fully dripped out with a lunchbox and everything like he's dedicated to the bit he also does this really weird thing with his tongue and Yeah, the only reason I'm showing that is because that's going to be important later on. I'm sorry you had to witness that. But if I had to witness it, then you did too, if you've not already. And this is just very clearly fetish content. Like, very clearly, this guy has some pretty disturbing and disgusting fetishes. It's gross. Need I say more? The whole thing is genuinely terrifying. And creators such as Nick Crowley and Nexbo and... I can't name the list of them because I'd be here all day. I have really, really good videos on it. So if you'd like to go and like learn a little bit more, those are you go to because they're fantastic. As they've tried to spread awareness about this case, you know, they've done it really, really respectfully because this man could have victims out there. I mean, he probably does have victims out there. People that have been traumatised by this man, and we're going to talk about this in a moment. And it's clear that he is also linked to the Truth Sticks and the Stephanie Schooley accounts. The internet at the moment believes that he also runs these accounts. However, this has not been verified as of yet, as there is no way to verify it. But on these Instagram accounts, he would also interact with children on these accounts. And then when anyone tried to call him out on what he was doing, he would be like, well, actually, you're the PDF file because why are you interacting with me? I'm just a schoolboy. The whole thing is so weird, right? The whole thing is insane. Some people need their internet routers ripping away from their houses, like seriously. Obviously, because of big creators covering this story, there has been a surge in popularity regarding to this case, which is great as it raises awareness about him. And the internet also has been able to find out lots of information about this person behind Smart Schoolboy's account. <coughs> Me. So they were able to find out that this man is, you have three seconds to guess his age, three seconds, 59 year old David Alter. He is 59. He's older than my own dad. Not only that, they were also able to find that David Alter had connections in London and in Doncaster, where he currently resides today. Now, David Alter has also been doxxed, and I'm not one to condone doxxing, because I think doxxing is the most vile thing you can do to someone. However, I think for just this one time, I'm just going to Digging around on the internet, it's believed that David has been involved with the police before. However, I say allegedly because these claims have not been verified. I apologise if they have been verified and I've just not found that information, but it's believed that he has. It turns out that David Alter is like those urban legends that you have in like your own, own town. Like, you know that one kind of person that you have in your town that's like the local weirdo and it's like, oh yeah, she chased like school children home with a knife, like that kind of person? Well, that was David Alter except he wasn't an urban legend he was like real and he he did this he was the creepy guy that would chase and follow kids home from school 
dressed up as a school child. Researching into this, some people believe that the name David Alter could be like a fake name as, you know, Alter, alternative, as he has a Facebook page called David London and David London was because when he moved to London, so he changed his Facebook name to David London. Some people believe it could be a fake name. David Alter Ego kind of thing. Like, I don't know, just a theory. Again, there was also claims that David had been arrested for just being a local creep and traumatizing people but again these claims have not been verified but people did find his address and put his windows through so run down weird creepy guy dresses up as a school kid is a danger to society very clearly needs mental health is a danger to himself and probably others because he is a pdf file very clearly not right in the head probably has people out there that have been traumatized by him when they were younger you know it, it's it's a serious deal and this is the part of the video where we talk about why the internet can't take anything f seriously for more than five minutes. Now there was a reason why I wanted to create this video in the first place because I came across this TikTok and the TikTok has been deleted so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna flash up what it said. Uh, this cold is absolutely eating my ass. Anyway yeah so this is the TikTok. Yeah so someone said what if schoolboy9 took Andrew Gosden? think about it because Andrew lived in Doncaster at the time and he went to London on the train and Schoolboy 9 travelled between Doncaster and London especially apparently him being around since the 90s and Andrew disappeared in 2007 so they must have lived really close to each other. Do people not have two brain cells that they can rub together in their heads and think actually this really probably isn't very likely. Maybe I shouldn't share that on the internet where Andrew Gosden's family might come across this and see that he's being like dragged into this whole fiasco. Not only that, you can't just randomly accuse someone, Schoolboy9, of being involved in Andrew Gosden's disappearance. Do you know how crazy that sounds? Based on what? Based on what evidence? Schoolboy9 is an absolute freak, yes, but you can't just you can't do that that's th <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with the case andrew gosdom disappeared back in 2007 at the age of 14 years old from doncaster now he'd actually bought a one-way ticket to london where he was seen leaving the train station but has never been seen since and today his case still remains completely unsolved and his whereabouts is still unknown so someone has sat there and gone well andrew doncaster schoolboy doncaster he did it he did it employ this person as the chief of police please do you how do you do the mental gymnastics to come to that conclusion now don't get me wrong and i've said this before it's okay to have theories like this right it's okay to you know share these theories with your close friends over a few drinks and you know talk about it blah 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 but when you share it to the internet, you have blasted that for everybody to see. And not only that, more stupid people are going to read that and look into it and then start going too far with it. Because all the comments were like, oh my god, you might be onto something, you might have cracked the case. I don't know if they were deleting comments or what, but there wasn't a single comment that was like, maybe we shouldn't do this. And I didn't know if it was just me overreacting, but... I, I think it's weird. Like, even if you did want to try and connect him to Andrew Gosden, you just couldn't. Andrew Gosden was 14 years old, and when he went missing, he wasn't wearing ankle boots or a school uniform or anything like that. Like, there's no... There is, there is zero correlation. There is no evidence for this, and someone just throws it out there on the internet, and people will take it at face value. Is that the creator's fault? Not really, because they're not responsible for how other people take information but you just need to be really careful with what you say online and you taught that from a very young age another thing that really bugs me about tiktok is again people will do anything for a little bit of clout even if that means completely humiliating themselves for example this screenshot right here someone has literally cosplaying a smart school but you are cosplaying as a pdf file this has the same energy as dressing up as jimmy savile yeah you don't like the sound of that do you so why are you doing it to smart school boy nine you weird pack it in like, haha funny look at me dressing up as creepy internet man like like I said before, this man probably has victims that are genuinely probably quite traumatised by him. So why are you dressing up as some absolute weirdo on the internet?
Like, just a simple question. Why? Like, they even got the makeup accurate as well and the ankle boots. Like, they were dedicated to the bit. Do you know what I mean? They, they sat there and had time to think this through before posting it. Like, there's a very broad spectrum of how people are dealing with this. People are dealing with it as the laughing stock and making it a joke, which I suppose is slightly better than sensationalising it and turning it into a murder case that is absolutely not like trying to claim that schoolboy is a deranged murderer that was involved in many missing people's different murders when there is absolutely no evidence for that whatsoever you can't throw accusations like that out there another really interesting tiktok that i came across was this one in a twisted way, he fantasises not only about children and being a child, but rather the corpse of a child. The swollen lips, purple, white, pale face are indicators of a corpse. <sighs> Some have even pointed out the disturbing sloshing sounds that he makes with his tongue in a few videos, which could simulate the sound of a mushy corpse. Again, do you see what I mean when people begin to sensationalise it? You, you don't... <sighs> I don't want to sound like I'm giving Smart Schoolboy the benefit of the doubt because I am absolutely not. I need to stress this. This man is a danger. He needs to be locked up. He needs to be dealt with. But coming up with shit like that just to like make the case more horrifying than it already is is so wild. I mean, I obviously cannot clarify if this is true or if this is false, but I feel like it's such a wild jump to get to. Do you know what I mean? It could be right, absolutely, but at the same time... But then again, the Twitter account of Smart School Boy 9 was apparently following a load of fan accounts of John Bonet Ramsey, so that in itself is really weird. And it doesn't end there, as the Smart School Boy fiasco has ended up on Roblox, a child's game. Not in particular, someone just decided to take it upon themselves to, in a game of dress to impress, is that what it's called? Dress, the, the game that's really big on Roblox right now, we have to like dress over. Is that called Dress to Impress? The theme on there was school, and this is what they posted. People on this app are so slow, brain dead. Um, which, I mean, it's kind of an insult to myself as I am a TikTok content creator. But it just gets worse as people on TikTok, it hasn't stopped there, as people have begun making edits of this guy whole ass edits people have spent hours of their day crafting together an edit about a pe and if i look like that too bro that's fucked up what they be doing to y'all i ain't even gonna hold you bro i'll be saying that's fucked up like bro you probably had the full washing set you should be fired probably if they ain't cut your shit fuck it though bro it's your life I don't know if it's ironic or not or why people would do this, but it's just insane. It's insane. People can't take anything seriously. I know what you're thinking. Oh, Dollface, but you know, it doesn't always have to be serious. Like, people can look at the funny side of things. Yeah, absolutely they can, but time and place. Time and place. So if you're that group of people that are probably wondering, you know, why is this so wrong? Why is this so bad? Why are people, why are you getting mad at people bringing awareness about the case? You know, they're still promoting it and they're still getting the word out. And yes, that is absolutely true. But again, there is a way to do it. Because it's now got to the point where you're involving other people in the case that have absolutely nothing to do with it whatsoever. For example, Andrew Gosden. Like, could you imagine his family coming across something like that? Like, ah, it's just insane. People are no longer looking at this seriously. They're looking at it as the laughing stock of the internet, as the joke. And I mean, I suppose from what we know, he hasn't harmed anyone, which is a good thing but he's still dangerous he is a very clearly mentally unwell pdf file not that him being mentally unwell excuses any of his behaviors because it absolutely does not but it's clear that he needs he needs help it's just one of these situations where people need to perhaps think before they hit that post button because people throw around these theories that could possibly get people hurt as well as jeopardize an investigation in general like this happened in particular with the jay slater case the nicola bully case it always happens people take matters into their own hands they take it too far they turn it into a laughing stock and it's you know it, it these are real people, you know, these are people that have lives, especially if smart schoolboy's victims 
if he has victims, these are real people. This was supposed to be a really horrific and, you know, terrifying story about an, an online creep that could harm children and instead it's just been turned into the biggest butt of a joke and all i have to say to end this video is i hope that in future we can do better anyway thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed please let me know if you'd like to follow me on any of the social medias the link will be in the description down below and so will the link to become a channel member where you can leave case requests and join the discord if you'll excuse me i'm gonna go and blow my nose bye